Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week, we'll be taking a look at how you can use the Parsha Volume Shader in 3D Studio Max through Mental Ray. It's a great way of adding volumetric effects to your scene for minimal effort. The Parsha Volume Shader actually stands for Partial Volume, and it tells Mental Ray to render the volume as though there were small particles in it that actually reflect the light as it travels through space. It creates a sort of misty effect. So let's get started. You can see I have a very simple scene here set up. It's the warehouse scene from the V-Ray videos. And what we're going to do is add a volume shader to this scene. Let's take a look at the original render without the volume effect. You can see that we have a spotlight here pointed into the scene. And what we want to do is create a sort of dense atmosphere as though it's humid inside of this warehouse. I'm going to close my render. And I'm going to open up my render settings panel. Now in the Renderer tab, under Camera Effects Rollout, under the Camera Shaders group, we can actually assign the Parsha Volume Shader to this volume map. And you can see it appear right here. I'll click OK. Now the default settings, we'll take a look at them in a second. But what we want to do is edit this map. So I'm going to open my Material Editor and click drag it into an empty slot as an instance. So let's take a render with the default values and see what we get. Now this render took 17 minutes to complete, which is far too long for a single frame. So the first thing that we're going to do is work on backing down the quality of the effect in order to achieve a more acceptable render time. So in my material editor, I'm going to scroll down to the minimum and maximum step length. Now the Parsha volume actually works in a sort of layered fashion, and these two parameters allow you to control the distance between those layers. When the distance is very high, the quality of the effect goes down. When those layers are very thin, the quality of the effect goes up. So what we're going to do is change the minimum step length to 0.5 and the maximum step length to just one foot. Let's take another render and see how that looks. So this render only took about a minute and a half, which is much more manageable. Now if you look very closely, you might see that we've introduced a bit of an artifact onto the back wall. This is caused by that stepping effect. But while we're testing, it's really not that bad. So we'll let it slide for now, and we can always turn the quality back up later. Now within the Parsha Volume Shader, there's really only a few parameters that you need to be aware of. The scatter color and the extinction value. The extinction value controls how quickly light is absorbed by the medium. The lower the value, the less light is absorbed, and so you see that the light is very, very bright. If we turn this value up a little bit higher, like say 0 0.007, we'll actually see more of the light get absorbed by the medium, and the scene will darken up. Let me block off a small section of this render so that we can see the difference. I'm going to grab a region, and this is exactly where I want it, and I'm going to go ahead and take a render. So you'll notice within the region that this render has darkened up considerably, and that is exactly the effect that we were looking to create by increasing the extinction value. I strongly encourage you to try working with the Parsha Volume Shader in 3D Studio Max. It gives you a very easy window into a very powerful aspect of Mental Ray. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.